Welcome back to another episode of Christian Natural Health. Today, I am very excited to have Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum. He is one of the most frequently quoted integrative pain and fibromyalgia medical authorities in the world. He's the author of the, best, the best-selling From Fatigued to Fantastic, Pain-Free 123, The Complete Guide to Beating Sugar Addiction, Real Cause, Real Cure, The Fatigue and Fibromyalgia Solution, Diabetes is Optional, and the popular free smartphone app, Cures A to Z. He is the lead author of eight studies on effective treatment for fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, and a study on effective treatment of autism using NAET. Dr. Teitelbaum appears often as a guest on news and talk shows nationwide, including Good Morning America, The Dr. Oz Show, Oprah and Friends, CNN, and Fox News Health. Welcome, Jacob. This is such an honor. Lauren, it's awesome to be with you and with the gang. And for those of you who are joining us today, you're going to get a lot, a lot of good information. If you have pain, if you have fatigue, if you have long COVID, if you have CFS or fibromyalgia, any of those things, these are all parts of the human energy crisis that are going on. We are going to teach you how to turbocharge energy easily, how to make those problems go away, and how to get your life back. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So um, why do chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia especially tend to go together? Is there is there like an underlying link between them? Yeah, they're the same disease in most people. You know, I, I tease people ask, what's the difference? You know, and again, I, I can say that there's about 20% who don't have pain. But for the people who have pain, they're the same disease. If you go to the rheumatologist, they'll come out to the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. You go next door to the infectious disease specialist to come out to a diagnosis of CFS. It's the, well, let me give you the best, the main difference between the two. Um, the CFS is one of the most crappy diagnostic criteria ever created in yes. the 50 years I've been in medicine. There are a few other things that are worse, like TSH. I, relying on TSH for thyroid, that's even worse than that. Um, the fibromyalgia diagnostic criteria are much more useful. Gotcha. And what's the connection between those and sleep? And sleep? Okay, so what's happening in CFS and fibromyalgia, uh, I'm going to use them interchangeably. These represent an energy crisis where any of a number of things have dropped your energy production or increased demands such as infections, increased demands on the body energetically to where you you basically trip a circuit breaker. Energy goes so low, the energy, the area that uses the most energy for its size is a small almond-sized circuit breaker called the hypothalamus right in this area of the brain. Um, that area controls sleep, hormones, and blood pressure or autonomic function. So you'll find that you have trouble sleeping even though you're exhausted. Uh, your entire hormone system will go off whack despite normal testing. And um, you, when you stand up, gravity sends blood to your legs. And instead of the autonomic system sending it back up, it stays down there. So people get racing heart and then they get brain fog and they get all these different things. So basically you're tripping a circuit breaker and restoring energy production and getting rid of the things that are unnecessarily draining energy is one way, a main way to turn this circuit breaker back on. And for those who have more of a little bit of a, like the research, well, show me. It's like a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study published um, in major CFS journal, uh, put together with the help of researchers at the NIH, showed 90% of people, 91% uh, of people improved with an average 90% increase in quality of life. Um, this is p-value less than 0. 0.0001 versus placebo. This is dramatic effect by using the shine protocol okay. and this is where we optimize sleep hormones and hypotension infections nutrition exercise as able not these go on and exercise more where you crash and burn we're not talking about that they're talking about just enough to maintain conditioning as able Got it. okay so and it sounds like for, you know as far as the circuit breaker getting tripped give us an example of what does this look like how how does that happen in the first place how does the hypothalamus end up kind of being the circuit breaker. <laughs> exactly. Well, what happens is the hypothalamus uses more energy for its size than any place else in the body. Yeah. Because of that, as energy levels start to drop down, that's the first thing that goes offline. Okay. The next area that uses the most size for anything in the body would be the most, uh, for any, for its, use most energy for its size in the body would be the muscles. Muscles use a good bit of energy, but here's the funny thing. We think that, you know, intuitively, if the muscles ran out of energy, they'd go loose and limp. 
Um, but no, if you come home after a heavy workout, you don't go, honey, my muscles are all loose and limp. You see, they're tight. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And so it, it's interesting. It takes more energy for muscles to stretch. So like a spring it takes yeah. more energy to stretch that spring yeah. than to contract. And uh, if you're just looking, those the charts in terms of what it takes in terms of the energy production for both things. Um, so when you don't have enough energy, your muscles get stuck in a shortened position. And after a couple of hours or weeks or months or years of that, they hurt like hell. And then you get, now you're off to the races because the chronic pain triggers brain pain, central sensitization, microglial activation, blah, blah, blah. Basically brain stimulated by the uh, pain coming from the brain itself. Uh, and then you get the neuropathy, small fiber neuropathy pain. So basically, this is a cascade event. Energy goes down, trips the circuit breaker, throws the muscles into tightening uh, and pain, triggers the immune system to get exhausted. And now you've got the whole process getting set into play. Okay, so backing up to the root cause of the very beginning of this whole process, it sounds like it's the energy depletion. Are we talking about mitochondria? Yes, we are. Uh, these are the body's energy furnaces. And if they're inefficient or if they're starting to break down because of free radical damage or any of dozens of other triggers that can cause uh, changes or the energy or the furnaces are just not working as well. There's not as many and they're malfunctioning. Um, then uh, you drop energy production and that's a, a part, not the part, but a key part of the vicious cycle. Got it. Okay. So it sounds like from what you're talking about with the shine protocol, you kind of have to hit all of these different pathways simultaneously in order to achieve the optimal results. Is that true? You don't necessarily have to do all. If you do enough of them, your body will take over for the rest. There. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, and so can you also distinguish a lot of times people talk about just adrenal fatigue. How does adrenal fatigue compare to hypothalamic dysfunction? What would you say is the difference? It's a subset. It's one piece of it. So when you'll see the early hypothalamic dysfunction, um, you'll see the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal mm -hmm. axis goes down. Um, so there's the adrenal fatigue can be where the glands themselves or two little areas that's at the top of the kidneys have just exhausted. And that happens from stress. Again, these the adrenals are the alarms. So it's kind of like the bugler in the army that goes do, 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 and sends everybody off, you know, and, you know, to mobilize everything. And that works and you fight your battle. But if that bugler is just blowing that horn all day and all night, yeah. uh, which is what's happening in modern society. We live in a society where those who in power, which is basically those who own the media, same thing, um, have realized that for, when I was your age, the Madison Avenue uh, advertising executive mantra was sex sells. You wanted to sell something, you had handsome guys and pretty gals, and they were by the cars or the beer or whatever you wanted to sell. Um, now the mantra is fear and divisiveness sells. If they can keep you scared to death and hating everybody else, um, they can control you. That's, they can keep you watching 24-7. That is very profound. Absolutely true, for sure. Yes. Yep. So, and it exhausts your adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a whole lot of that since 2020, especially. <laughs> a lot of people mm -hmm. that are just, just over overburdened and completely exhausted. COVID was one more attempt. And then, you know, then that industry was saying, you know, give us everything, you know, don't ask questions. This is COVID, damn it. We got that money now. Laws, regulations, safety, screw that. You know, they were using fear right. and doing all this. <laughs> and now we have, you know, the war going on, um, you know, with Russia. And and again, I, I, I tend to be not in favor of the military industrial complex, that basically sucks money and gets us into wars for every year since I've been born, except one. We've been doing what Russia is doing. We don't care about it in the media. It's like, oh, no, we're, we're not attacking countries. There's not been a single year except one year since I've been born that the United States has not been in a country overthrowing its government or sending its troops there. But wow. we're the good guys. No, we're not. We're going in to take their stuff and control them. We're doing the same thing Russia is doing, but... We're not doing it to white people in uh, Europe. Yeah. I okay. Think so, you know, but the, the bottom line is each of these, and I'm I'm for what we're doing now in Ukraine. I'm for supporting them. It's like in World War II, I was for that. But each of these industries are basically 
I'm trying to scare you to death and I'm exhausting your adrenals. So I'm going to recommend a simple thing. Um, it's a Tai Chi move. If you're watching a newscast and you find that it's now, and now for the next crisis, <laughs> to yeah. me it's in the world, you know, not anything, everything's a crisis, you know, and it's going to be the worst weather ever and, and there's no safe place. That's funny, this is the headline. They said, no safe place left in America or in the world. It's like, for whether it's like, oh my God, you know? So right. it's a simple, simple Tai Chi move that your adrenals will love. It's like, center, breathe, nice deep breath, reach to the side, all the way, grab the remote and click off. Absolutely. <laughs> your adrenal. Your adrenals will thank you. <laughs> I agree. And I've had a lot of people that I've sort of told over the last couple of years, especially what I typically do is I get the headlines, I pray over them and I delete them because I don't, there, you don't need to know all the details. It just stresses they're, you out. They're, they're also fiction. That, that's often the case as well. I'm, I'm in the media a lot. For some reason, they like me mm -hmm. because I keep telling everybody, turn it off, you know, <laughs> um, and liking me, if I'm, accurately quoted where the what i'm really saying is being said 20 percent of the time that's a lot 20 percent of the time none of the words that they're quoting are mine oh wow that's crazy and in between they're misquoting um it's a fiction they're nice people i've never met anybody in the media in the pharmaceutical industry the fda or in government who wasn't the love mm -hmm. they are nice people in institutions that are corrupt um and it just it's propaganda if you just think of it you know we talk about russia and how do the people not know they're invading a country no we're fighting nazis we're fighting for freedom of the motherland and protect us it's propaganda can get people looking at things that much if you just realize all that stuff on the media is the same propaganda from another side it's a fiction turn it off go out for a walk in nature you know go hug your family and go sit and read a book um and you'll find that your adrenals will heal yeah absolutely so that's a good place to start once somebody's in that situation already but once they find themselves in this hypothalamic dysfunction so where would you say, you said you don't have to do the entire SHINE protocol simultaneously. Where do they start? And then at what point do you recognize, because you kind of alluded to toxicity and, and um, infections and things like that. Does, is it completely individual or are there certain places you typically start? So it's a mix. So let's just wrap up the low adrenal. How do you tell you have low adrenal? If you get hangry, irritable when hungry. Mm -hmm. I, I would trade. I would keep that one question. Do you get irritable when hungry? Ask not just to the person, but to whoever's with them, their spouse or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes the person will go, I don't know, and the spouse is going. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Treat the adrenal. There's a nice simple supplement called Adrenoplex, cutting down sugar, increasing salt, increasing water. Uh, the Adrenoplex is nice because it has all the supplements and glandulars and B5 and uh, vitamin C and licorice and all the things you need in it. So I like that. That'll smooth it right out. Um, so if it's just that and you're sleeping okay, don't worry about it. Just treat the adrenal. Um, but say you find you're exhausted and you can't sleep. That paradox. That Because normally you're exhausted, you have a weekend off, you sleep the whole weekend. Exhausted and can't sleep. That paradox tells you you've tripped the circuit breaker that controls sleep, that hypothalamic circuit breaker. You now are in the CFS and fibromyalgia realm. Whether or not you fit the criteria or not, that tripping that circuit breaker is going on. So what do you do? You know, it, what I recommend that people do is to start initially. Um, hold on just a second. Is to go ahead and start initially with a good multivitamin. B vitamins and magnesium are critical. You just really have to have those. Um, I like one called clinical essentials. I'll get the tablets, not the capsules. Take two a day, easy. Um, I would also start with ribose. Um, there's a mix of ribose, ashwagandha, rhodiola, green tea extract, licorice, uh, and schizandro. That's called Smart Energy System. Uh, in our recent study, that we're getting ready for publication now, um, and this was in people who had at least a 50% drop in function. They're crippled. 
from their fatigue. Um, 60% are improved by one bottle and 60% average increase in energy, 80% increase in stamina. So a nice simple thing that starts with a multivitamin, smart energy system, and then the HRG80 red ginseng. Uh, we did a study of 188 people uh, with severe, what, no, I don't want to talk about diseases in the context of a thing, but who had at least a 50% drop in energy with the brain fog pain and the whole thing. They also, about two thirds of them improved. You want the, it has to be the HRG80. I would get the chewable tablets, not the capsules, because it's a quarter of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, and you can adjust it. I find for me, just half a tablet mm -hmm. is all I need on days that I feel more, I want more energy. Mm -hmm. So that little trio right there for most people listening, whether you just have day to day fatigue or brain fog, um, or whether you've gone for a blast and you've tripped a circuit breaker, um, you'll see a dramatic benefit. So that's when you, if you ask where to start, start with those three. Okay. And uh, tell us a little bit more about ribose. Why does that work for fatigue? And like, how much do you have to take in order for it to have that effect? Now we talk about the mitochondria and mm -hmm. we talk about the mitochondria are kind of like the batteries. You can't eat, you know, a, something from the table and suddenly turn it to have it be energy it has to be converted by the mitochondria into ATP and ADH, all these different energy molecules. Um, and if you look at these, these molecules all have ribose as the backbone. Uh, so if you look at adenosine, that's ribose plus vitamin B4. They haven't heard of it before. They devitamized. They, they turned Pluto. Pluto became a non-planet a couple of years ago. And My husband vitamin, has issues with that. <laughs> <laughs> we decide. Sorry, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's like on The Simpsons when they threw that guy out of the billionaire club. And it's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's um. So the ribose is the backbone, and in energy depleted states, mm -hmm. the body starts sacrificing uh, the ribose. It will instead of you know, in making the energy triphosphate, the three phosphate bonds, it will sometimes mush two of the uh, AMPs together to make one ADP, and then it loses, it has to throw one of the ribose away to do that. And that's kind of, an, basically okay. when the, when it's up against the wall in an emergency situations, trying to make enough energy, yeah. it can't be maintained because it's throwing out the acetylcarnitine, it's throwing out the ribose, it's, it's losing the things that it's needing to make energy. Uh, so ribose is low. And uh, the, the dosing, um, don't get tablets, it's stupid, you know, get the powders. It's 15, five grams, two to three times a day. Um, in the beginning, three times a day in, in the first two studies we did. Um, but even one, one scoop a day is fine. I just throw it in my morning coffee or cereal or something. Um, so five grams. And I like one, there's one called Shine Ribose, um, but any of the ones made by Bioenergy is good. If you do the smart energy system that has your ribose in it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So um, do you typically, if you're trying to target the mitochondria, do you just go with ribose? Do you go with the whole constellation of everything else in that uh, system? So like the NADH and um, the CoQ10 and carnitine and all of that together? So let's look at the N and Shine for nutrition. Number one, cut down sugar. Number two, increase salt. Most people do better with a high protein diet, but see what feels best to you. And of course, use common sense, eat food, not junk. Um, <clears throat> but then if you're looking at the supplements, we talked about the clinical essentials, HRG80, and the smart energy. Then I will add for coenzyme Q10, there's something called gamma cyclodextrin. It's a natural compound that I'm really blown away by it increases absorption of nutrients eightfold um it just puts it right through the gut right through the cell walls um and so the red ginseng i mentioned used the chewable because it's a quarter of the cost in our study we got the same effect um from people using one quarter of the dose uh and probably even less of the tablets because half got the capsules half got the tablets and the tablets did it because it, that has the gamma cyclodextrin in it. Tablets don't. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that one. That's fascinating. A way yeah, to. It uh, blew my mind. Gamma cyclodextrin. Cyclodextrin, yeah, definitely. We'll look into that. So, so if you're tired of people taking handfuls of pills all day, yeah, like get them more optimized. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure.
So the CoQ10, I do 100 milligram CoQ10 uh, by Europharma, Euromedica. It's the chewable CoQ10. Uh, and that that's what I take myself. I, I, I just remember the first times I took those tablets, I'm pretty energy sensitive. I can feel energetics quite a bit. Um, and just feeling, just picking it up and putting it in my mouth, I could feel the difference with these things. It was remarkable so definitely i add the coq10 i add the acetyl l-carnitine two grams a day but just for three to four months that fills the tank long term that's not good to take every day unless you need to maybe the 500 or unless you have neuropathic problems um but those are the key things that i'm going to go with you know the iodine is ready in the multi so so these organize the whole thing for people and so backing up to the, the uh, ribose one more time, you, you were referring to the fact that it takes more energy for a muscle to relax than it does for it to contract. If somebody mm -hmm. has that, where they feel like their muscles are already su always super tight, if they have a diagnosis of fibro or not, do you notice that ribose specifically helps those muscles to relax? Absolutely. And that's why it helps the energy, helps the cognition. And it uh, the main cause of pain in this country is myofascial or tight muscle pain. And most doctors would not know tight muscle pain if it slapped them across the face. We are <laughs> not trained in doing a, a muscle exam. We There's a concept of throwing muscle relaxant at it. But if you ask the doctor to feel two different people's bodies and say, show me the, where the muscle trigger point is to, to trigger what right. yeah and and then i said those are the things that tight thing and, it's, and it's, well i didn't learn about it it's all quackery <laughs> you know and it's, it's, and it's like well here's all the research i don't have time to waste my time on all that pseudoscience this is really <laughs> this is a conversation that most people medicine's a religion yeah, these okay. days and it and like many religions and god bless them uh they tend to block out anything that doesn't agree yeah that's true and md medicine it's basically how did the past that of the new england journal of medicine say that most medical education is slick advertising pharmaceutical advertising masquerading as science another editor of the new england journal uh wrote an article in the new york times saying she no longer believes most of what she reads in journals because they basically are yeah. what comes in the journal tells you who's paying the advertising for those journals. Now, of course, both of these editors soon left the New England Journal of Medicine after these statements, but just no, just no. I mean, medicine, I love medicine. It's a wonderful tool and it's an utter piece of crap for so much of what it teaches. But so, if you use it properly, it can be very powerful. Sure, yeah. So segue on that, I wanted to ask, how did you get into functional medicine as opposed to the more mainstream approach? The old fashioned way, you know, I grew up as a, a nice Jewish boy who want, was very empathic and wanted to be a healer. And to be a healer in, in that setting, there was, you know, here's your choice. You go to med school or you don't. That's a, you know, <laughs> so it's not like there's a whole lot of options or consciousness of things in med school. Um, you know, my dad had died. I was paying my own way. So working full time, went to college in about two and a half years because you pay by the semester, not by the credits. So it was like, okay, it's like 50% discount if you finish college in two years. Like <laughs> That sounds know, good. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that was all easy, you know. And then, you know, I went to med school and I figured, well, I'll, I'll speed through that. Um, and was working at Children's Hospital as on, on the burn, you know, as a uh, ICU nurse uh, and picking nurse for the kids and um, all that was easy but then my family went through a meltdown um, and figured I was the one they were going to peel it in the middle it was like one of those comedy shows you know my uncle literally trying to manipulate one of my other cousins had a heart attack in my living room a little living room and you know in med school um, and it was I was not emotionally prepared to handle so that stress and some other stresses um, are what set me up for an energy crisis then i got the drop dead flu uh which clearly a nasty viral infection atypical lymphocytosis of 25 percent, but not mono uh but they couldn't identify the virus and six weeks later i was still too sick to function so they said well it must be depressed med student syndrome and say so they did you shall blow it off um and i just couldn't function i couldn't work i had no money i was homeless sleeping in parks so there i was in tulsa in parks, and it's as if the universe put a holistic homeless medical school sign on my park bench. Uh, I still remember Brenda Johnson, who's this wonderful chakra teacher, 
from England happened to be passing through Texas as I was going through. Um, and she taught me chakra work. Other people, um, you know, taught me, you know, reflexology and nutrition. And I, I met naturopaths. I, I didn't know there was, I, you can get a license and, and practice medicine doing this? And they said, uh-huh. And it's funny, I was all set to go, you know, figure I'd, if I got better, I'd go back and get my, you know, ND, go, go for a naturopathic degree. And uh, there's another story that I'll say off the air on how the universe said, no, you're going back to medicine. But doing all these different things, I learned enough to get myself better. I learned that I, about the candida issues, the adrenal issues, the nutritional issues, you know, um, and all these bits and pieces. And I'm a science geek, so I, I got myself well enough and um, real, was told, oh, yeah, you can come back if you're feeling mm -hmm. well enough. I thought it was done. It was like, no, really? I come back. And first my hair was down to here and my beard was down to here. And I remember putting a stethoscope to this 90-year-old guy's heart. And the cardiology professor says, Heidelbaum, when you walked in, he asked, who are you? And he said, the doctor. That man was going to have a heart attack. And I realized... <laughs> um, and he was right. And then, you know, the guy wasn't being mean or anti like long hair, hippie types or anything like that. It's just, uh, so that's when I cleaned up and, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I went back, um, and my nickname in college and med school was the phantom. Cause I'd be in the medical library two to four in the morning, most nights going through uh, the journals and the seeing not but the drug reps and God bless their nobody I mean I was horrible geek too shy if I try to talk to a girl my time would roll out of my mouth across the floor <laughs> you know it's like totally helpless and um <laughs> but that and but you can always count on drug reps to come and soothe their ego yeah I'm sure um, yeah <laughs> Uh, but what I learned, you know, in the journals, and I kept going to the professors, but, you know, it says it's vitamin B2, 400 milligrams, decreases migraine frequency 67%. That's nonsense, pseudoscience. And look, the B, other B vitamins decrease migraine, and, you know, heart failure decreases considerably, function improves. Through, and it was funny. You know, I'd give magnesium on the intensive care unit to the acute heart attack people, and they would all live and do fine. They wouldn't get the rhythm they wouldn't get the whole thing. And the head of the CCU comes up, Bob Beer, and says, what the hell are you doing to my CCU patients? And I said, well, Bob, glad they asked. Here's a bunch of studies. He was at one in 10 who, instead of saying, I don't have time for this nonsense, and then they can honestly say, I've seen no research, and sure, haven't yeah. seen a bit. He actually looked at it and came back, and what else you got? So this is how holistic doctors are made, Yeah, is they accidentally take time to look at the studies instead of throwing them away yeah that makes sense and th that's how those 10 percent become holistic and being on the other side of the white coat which was my experience so those two things yeah so there was your own passion experience based on what happened to you too so mm -hmm. back to the concept of you know the energy crisis and all the rest of that how does thyroid play into this as far as like the t4 to t3 conversion and thyroid generally how is that interconnected so we talk about the hypothalamic circuit breaker that controls sleep. So you got to take care of sleep, but controls the blood pressure. Now, also, there's a lot of stuff we're talking about today. And if you want to email me at fatigue, D-O-C, like fatigue doctor, fatigue doc at gmail.com. Just ask for the free information sheets for CFS or fibro. And I'll send you on, on maintaining the blood pressure. We don't have time to talk about the autonomic dysfunction. I'll send you a free information sheet that has two at-home test kits that you can see and then how to take care of it, make it go away. But the thyroid is also controlled. The whole hormonal system is on the circuit breaker. So many things are happening. Number one, uh, the body self-regulates it. It's kind of tasting the thyroid level and seeing if it's as much as it needed all the time. And then it'll make something called TRH. That's kind of the CEO of the company that comes down uh, and tells the foreman which, uh, to make TSH, which tells the thyroid workers to make more thyroid. And in medicine, the only test most doctors will do is a TSH which is a piece of crap test normally. But when the hypothalamus, and sorry for my language, it's just after 50 years in medicine. Okay, yeah. um, but with a hypothalamic dysfunction, 
as I, I lecture uh, often at the national conferences uh, worldwide, international conferences on CFS and fibro. I was lecturing once with Professor Gunther Neek, who's the most world-renowned researcher on thyroid issues um, in fibromyalgia. And I asked Gunther, is the TSH reliable in this disease? He said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Yet, it's the only test that most doctors will look at and do. So, number one, the four minutes of sleep. They only make half as much TSH as normal, not enough to make it abnormal on the test. Um, so, number one. Number two, thyroid function is often down. Iodine deficiency, uh, toxic uh, halides, other things could all be contributing to that. And then the body has mechanisms for trying to shut down the turn down the thermostat on energy production to conserve energy during energy crises, which again is what five miles is. You have a pneumonia on the ICU, your thyroid hormone is being turned into a mirror image that instead of stimulating energy, shuts down energy and the blood tests look normal unless they check the reverse T3. Um, and then sometimes the cells just become deaf to the thyroid, thyroid receptor resistance. So the you need very high doses, not of the T4, that makes it worse, not the synthroid, but of, of cytomel, of T3, to overcome that. So the answer to what you're questioning, um, I, so what you heard was blah, 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 blah. The shorter answer is there's a lot of ways thyroid can become malfunctioning. And the, my book, Shameless Plug from Flatit Fantastic, goes through each of these types of thyroid malfunction, how to tell, how to overcome it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and what would, what do you say is the role reason why adrenal fatigue or hypothalamic dysfunction generally leads to chronic infections? What's the connection there? Chronic infections? Chronic. Well, the thing is the adrenals regulate the immune mm -hmm. system. We don't know all mm -hmm. the mechanisms, but we know that uh, if you have a grossly overactive immune system, we give prednisone, it's immune suppressant. Um, and what, what most people don't realize is that too low of a cortisol, uh, we would say, I've seen this, saw this decades in practice. People come in, um, as, as funny, people started flying to see me from all over the world as a general internal medicine doctor. And there I was in some down, you know, country area and they and they would walk in, they would all have a bottle of water they put on my desk and I would go, well, let me, let me play. Dr. T, the psychic, let's see, you're tired, achy, brain fog, can't sleep. You've got increased thirst, increased, and they sound, did my wife rat me out? Or <laughs> rat my, my husband, usually, because it's mostly women who have yeah, right. yeah. diseases. Um, so they're all interrelated, but they would also have frequent infections. Yeah, I got a big bug that comes around, takes forever to go away. What I found is when I treated their low adrenal, they come back the next time and say, you know, Doc, I went the whole winter, didn't get sick once. Everybody else was sick. I didn't get sick at all. Mm -hmm. yep. The low adrenal so causes poor immune function also. And that also is what sets you up for the recurrent yeast issues as well? Yes, because people get these recurrent infections and they feel like other hell. And they tell the doctor, I need the antibiotics, which they often do. Um, and that triggers yeast overgrowth, and there is no test for yeast overgrowth. So, of course, medically, there's no test, and it, it can't exist. Damn it. See, you're in, you don't exist because I can't see you. <laughs> and, and that's that's a medical approach to it. It's like, my God, you know? So, and yes, there are tests that you'll find out that I wouldn't give a nickel for any of them. How do I diagnose candida overgrowth? Nasal congestion, post-nasal drip, chronic sinusitis, and or irritable bowel syndrome, gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation. In the presence of, unless it's seasonal allergies causing the sinus stuff, um, this is most often going to be candida overgrowth. Now, sometimes the gas bloating, diarrhea, constipation, the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, there's this very high-tech test that I use, is $20,000, that will distinguish between the SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and candida. And here's how the test goes. I ask, do, do your, when you pass gas, is it like silent but deadlies? <laughs> that sulfur rotten egg smell? And if they go, yes, that's SIBO. If they go, no, I can fill up a weather balloon, but not much, that's mm -hmm. candida. And then you take the $20,000 and go have a really nice time. <laughs> That's the way to do it, for sure. Mm -hmm. Another thing you talk about in your book, the fatigue from fatigue to fantastic, is the role that oxytocin plays as a neurotransmitter in the hypothalamus. Can you tell me more about that? 
Well, oxytocin, otherwise known as the love molecule or the orgasm molecule, is one of many critical neurotransmitters that go low and one will find. Um, you know, we have major hormones we talk about and major neurotransmitters, um, and all of them kind of play a role. Um, and then well, there's autoantibodies. But if you take a look, um, you'll see, and this was developed by Dr. Jay Goldstein, uh, where he found that if he went and gave 20 units um, intramuscularly of the oxytocin in a significant, probably about 40% of people, their fibro symptoms run away 40 minutes after the injection. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. And the, they had oxytocin deficiency as a key player. We will see in about 10% of cases um, where if, if I give a narcotic, you know, I give codeine or Percocet, they don't say, hey, I feel high and my pain goes away. There's about 10% that say, I feel like a normal, healthy person. Mm -hmm. My brain is back. My energy is back. And it usually doesn't take a high dose. They have an endorphin issue. Um, you have people with NMDA receptor issues. Um, you can give them ketamine, and that, that doesn't take the thousand dollars a shot that you're paying if you go to the ketamine clinics. Compounding pharmacies, if it's prescribed, can make nasal ketamine, where you take a couple sprays, and you get the same effect as the IV, and it costs about three dollars. Um, instead of the S ketamine that they're giving for depression, the no spray from the regular pharmacy, it's about eight hundred dollars a dose. Um, so the oxytocin is one more of these. Now it's a little harder because they have sublingual tablets and the rest, but I don't, they don't work as well as the injection. Really? Um, but if that's the neurotransmitter that's low and you give it, bingo. Yeah. Great. Great. Absolutely. So, um, changing gears a little bit, kind of, um, restless leg. So you talk about how restless leg can also be part of, like, it can be caused by the, the usual things we think about all of the electrolytes and iron and things like that, but also hypothyroidism and hypoglycemia. So yes. can you fill in that a little bit more. That's a very unusual symptom in my estimation, as far as hypothyroidism. Do you see it all the time? It's common. You drop your blood sugars when you're sleeping, which is one of the reasons people wake up between two and four in the morning. Especially if they wake up hungry, then that's hypoglycemia. If they wake up with nightmares, there's a good chance that's hypoglycemia. If they wake up with sweats, uh, the book talks about there's four main things, including low blood sugar, that can wake people up with sweats. Um, the So you drop energy to the muscles, and muscles are starting to do this. Um, you drop dopamine levels with the low iron, and you might say, oh, we all know about low iron. The MDs don't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the drug, that cute drug rep said, give Mirapex, and she knows to the dollar how much of her drug I'm prescribing. And she's so nice to me when I'm doing well, I don't know, but so you give the Mirapex. Well, it causes a lot of side effects, and it used to be really expensive. Yeah, but you know, the insurance covered it. And so this is medicine. And you ask, how about iron? Why does iron have to do with it? Yeah. And, or, well, iron test is normal. You realize researchers are saying that using the normal range that supply for iron testing is, quote, unquote, insane. Now, what the study shows is that ferritin levels, which is the best iron measure, I think, um, you know, in the absence of inflammation, if it's over 12, it's normal. You have to be under 12. Um, on the other hand, the studies show that people with illnesses, um, if the ferritin is under 60, they will have no iron very often and their bone marrow aspiration. They're basically, they have no iron. And that's where the quote using the normal range of 12 is insane. What the studies show is that taking iron supplements help restless leg until your ferritin level gets over 60, then there's no more benefit. Um, one caution, if you have low thyroid, because the low thyroid drops energy and I can't give you the exact mechanism, but it is a trigger for the restless leg syndrome. Uh, low magnesium, all of these things. Um, so if you're taking thyroid and you add iron, add the iron at bedtime, because if you take the thyroid in the morning, you take the two at the same time, you won't absorb your thyroid. It'll block it, separate them out. And I love um, part of what you keep bringing out is that this will work if this is your problem for so many of these different things. But if it's not, like there's a lot of studies where people will read about, hey, this is good for this, this is good for this. Yeah. And people come in with a shopping bag full of all the supplements. Yeah. So, so Lauren, understand, I, my goal was how do you make effective treatment available for millions of people, you know, 50 million worldwide? And you think, you know, I was taught as a kid, you build a better mouth shop, they'll be the path to your door. What an utter crock of 
That just doesn't work that way. You have uh -huh. really good marketing and put in $30 million of advertising, you might be able to go ahead unless you're competing with the drug companies, in which case they will close you down if you mention the name of a disease and a treatment. They will say it is unproven. And you say, but here's 27 studies. And they'll say, we don't want to look at the studies. Did you pay the $400 million regulatory fee to be able to talk about that research for an illness? No. Then we are closing down your Facebook page. We are closing down your uh, website. Okay, so this is basically a quirk in our regulatory system where it is illegal for anything cheap to be effectively promoted in this country. You can't talk about the science if you have any financial tie to the supplement and all good people. But in a, in a Congress, they can't agree whether it's day or night. They had a vote in the Senate, as an amendment to a bill saying it should be legal to discuss research on natural therapies. 88 senators voted against it. Okay, so it, they're all good people. But the system the systems are broken. Um, so here I am. I found an effective way to help people. Um, so you write a book. And this is the fourth edition. The first edition was about this thick. It was more pamphlet in 1996. And now it's like, yeah. like and it's, so, you know, the blue cover from Fatigue Fantastic is very good. So you write the book. You do the studies. Like I said, we have eight studies now that we've done. So you figure out what works. Um, how do I get paid for being here? I don't get paid for being here. Um, you know, you're out teaching. I'll be lecturing in Columbus next week. So, you know, and then I'll, so you're out teaching. It's a game. How do you make effective treatment available for 50 million people who have no resources, have no access? Um, so part of that game was I hold the U.S. patent for computerized physician. It was, I made it for people with CFS and fibro, so everybody in the world could go online, fill out this, uh, do a questionnaire, put in their labs if they had them, and it would say, here are the things causing oh, awesome. your energy crisis, and then put together a treatment protocol yeah. that would say, here are the supplements, here are the prescriptions, most likely to help given your mix. Now, mm -hmm. that's illegal to make that free to people. Um so, but now what we have instead is an energy analysis program that doesn't treat anything. It just... You took out the disease name, <laughs> the diagnosis. It just, it just helps optimize your energy and determine where your energy leaks are and how to optimize energy in your given case. It's uh, energyanalysisprogram.com. Okay, awesome. And uh, it's uh, no charge. That's my wife and I. We used to charge 400, but everybody wrote back, I'm on Medicaid. I can't afford anything. And my wife and I just decided we're going to make it free to everybody. So these are the different tools. It's kind of a game in a system that's geared to prevent. Because again, if you're out there, and most of you are women with this disease, um, and you're saying, well, I should be getting my $25,000 in disability a month because I have a disability policy, but they're not paying. And there's 12 million of you. And you figure 25,000 times 12 million. Well, gee, that's a lot of money that they save by making believe you're crazy. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. My goodness. Yeah, no. So, crazy. anyway, well, that's, the, that's the game. <laughs> you also alluded at the beginning to long COVID. So, how does long COVID fit into all of this? Long COVID is one more form of post viral chronic fatigue syndrome. I mentioned I had nasty viral infection. Knocked me, you know, took my circuit breaker. And yeah. so it's not everybody who gets the infection, but people who tend to be under a lot of stress, um, and especially people who, because my kind of thing was if I was sick, that I didn't take any days off. Um, it's funny, it was Cal Ripken, who was a baseball player in, uh, in Baltimore, who got the Iron Man Award. He didn't miss any days for illness in 20 years. I just laughed at him. Uh, once I got back to med school for my um, chronic fatigue syndrome, I have not missed a day's work, even if I was yellow, you know, <laughs> bright yellow from having got hepatitis A from when I was vegetarian and I was in the Caribbean. They, they washed the vegetables and the water has hepatitis. Um, I showed up at work. The universe took care of me. It had two and a half foot of snow on the ground and nobody showed up but me and my nurse. Um, <laughs> but, um, but these are people who tend to kind of push through the infection. These are the ones that get the long COVID. They have, um, 
months later, years later, um, tired, achy, weight gain. Uh, weight gain will come later. Difficulty sleeping it's often takes a year to kick in. But the brain fog, pain, and fatigue, uh, a shortness of breath, other symptoms are common. For those of you with shortness of breath from the COVID, just email me for the long COVID info sheets but or, or CFS, but also for the shortness of breath information sheet. I'll tell you how to take care of that and address that. Um, the, so they trip the circuit breaker. It's the same thing, post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome. And they're, they're ignoring anybody who's familiar with the research and they're just doing, it'll be 30 years until the NIH because it's any, all those researchers who over the last 25 years have started to figure out CFS except for dribbles of the money, they're not giving it to them. They are hiring people who are not a fucking clue, which is what they've done in the 50, sorry, in the 50 years I've been in medicine. The person they put in charge of CFS research knew nothing about it, never showed up at the conferences, was the only NIH had ever booed at every time his name came in because he never showed up. He never asked anybody who had a clue about the disease when he set up the study, so they all failed. And this is the same thing they're doing now. Nicer people, they're not quite the nitwits <laughs> that back. this person was, but they are not hiring the people who know. They're not going to Stanford and getting the people that are not going to UCLA and getting the doctors who've been researching it for 20 years. They're getting people go, who you say you chronic fatigue syndrome, who, what? And God bless them. But if you are waiting on them, you are going to have a wait. There's no need to wait for them to get their act together. Absolutely. You can get well now. What have I not asked you that you want to make sure you leave with our audience? Okay, remember what I talked about with these conditions, which is as people who tend to have an energy crisis. Why do they have the energy crisis? Because they have trouble setting boundaries. They have trouble saying no. And yes. Okay. And so as you get better, use your energy not to go back to what made you sick in the first place, not to catch up on those 18 bags of paperwork that have been turning to mold in your basement, mm -hmm. not to be doing the stuff everybody else wants you to do and tells you you should do and that your brain is in program that, well, as a good boy, a good girl, this is what good boys and good girls do. They give up for everybody and they take care of everybody except themselves. Screw that stuff. Yeah. See what feels good to you without harming anybody else. Use your energy for that. If you do and say no to things that feel bad, no justification needed, if you get that, another name for what I just described is being authentic Absolutely. or knowing yourself. And what will happen, it's kind of like Spider-Man got bit by the radioactive spider and now he's got superpowers. And you think that after this disease, I really should have got superpowers or something for it. This <laughs> is your superpower is authenticity. Learning to say no to things that feel bad and following your bliss. And you'll look back and realize this illness was a gift. I know it's hard to believe now, but I've been there, done that, and I can truly say that. See what feels good to you, do that. Say no to things that feel bad. That's simple. And if the person says, but how dare you do that? I say, doctor's orders. I'm a doctor, right? So and I'm not going to order you to do anything, but you can make believe. Well, the doctor told me I have to say no to this. You're telling me I shouldn't listen to the, to the doctor? And then they'll go, oh, oh, oh. And you'll right. find these are these are little energy vampires. These are people who come by and will do an emotional toxic waste dump on you and dump their stuff, and then they'll suck you dry. And you can tell you've met an, an energy vampire because you feel worse when they walk away. Yeah. Most of your friends, you feel better when they come visit, but they walk away, you feel worse. And when you start using language and knows like I'm just doing here, and you start invoking the power of the almighty doctor told me, you know, whatever it takes, these people will leave you alone and go find somebody else to suck dry. Got it. That's great. So I will link in the show notes to all of the various places that you said that people can get information from you and find out more about you. And thank you, Jacob. This has been wonderful. Oh, Lauren, it's been a blast. And forgive me if I get a little melodramatic. It's just a matter of you've been through so much, guys. And, and you know, it's just it's a way to try to help you 
to help make a point and to help get you free of what you get stuck in. So please forgive me if, if it got a little <laughs> over the board for you. And it has been a blast, Lauren. Thank you so much. And as I live in Hawaii, I can say aloha, everybody. Aloha. aloha. Thank you. <laughs> Are you looking for a holistically minded healthcare practitioner who truly treats root cause rather than symptom suppression? Unfortunately, even in the alternative healing professions, this isn't a given. That's why I've created wholehealthdoctor.com, a resource to help connect patients to healthcare practitioners in their area who share a root cause philosophy. Alternatively, most of the practitioners listed also practice telehealth. So if there isn't anyone local to you, you can still find a great practitioner to help you regain optimal health. Go to wholehealthdoctor.com. That's whole healthdr.com, type in your location or adjust the specialty that you're looking for and find the practitioner who's right for you.